He was a teacher, and a mighty fine one too, I hear. He opened an orphanage in the city of Warsaw, Poland, the biggest city in Poland. But when the Nazis came, when the German soldiers came to arrest him, to send him to Treblinka, to send him to the gas chambers, to... But wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. He was born Henrik Goldschmidt. In school, he was a brilliant student, so brilliant that when his father died at the age of 13, he went to, he went to work as a teacher, as a tutor, to support his family. He studied medicine in college, became a children's doctor, studied ped, uh, pedi he was a pediatrician, a children's doctor, and he worked in a children's hospital. And he opened an orphanage in Warsaw, the largest city and the capital of Poland. He changed his name from Henrik Goldsmith to Janik Korczyk. Janik Korczyk. He said it sounded like a poem, like a song. He changed his name when he began to write children's books. The children's books became very popular in Poland, in all of Europe, and even in America. At the age of 32, at the young age of 32, he opened an orphanage in Poland. He became director. He designed the orphanage himself. And he gave a home to many, many, many homeless children in Warsaw, Poland. But then came 1939. The German army invaded Poland. Invaded Poland, and within weeks, they took over the whole country. And that next year, in the year 1940, they set up in Warsaw, that's his orphanage. Here's the German soldiers coming in, and the German army set up a ghetto in Warsaw around the Jewish neighborhood. They built a wall and enclosed the whole Jewish neighborhood. A ghetto, it's a walled in city where nobody could go in, nobody could go out. And you were a prisoner in your own city. Soon, the Germans began to force people from other villages into the Warsaw Ghetto. Look at that picture. You can see the walled-in section of the city. As they emptied out village after village after village in Poland, these people were dumped into the ghetto, into the walled-in city. And it became very, very, very crowded. So that when you had an apartment where a family lived before, a two-bedroom apartment, now you had in that two-bedroom apartment four or five families. That's how crowded it became. And Gorczyk was forced to move his ghetto from the city into he, to move his orphanage from the city into the ghetto. Inside the ghetto, people were living on the streets because there was no more room for people in apartments. And without being able to go inside or outside, there was no way for them to go to work, to, go to, to earn a living. And people who lived inside the ghetto had to begin selling their own goods from their house on the streets to live. Thousands of people were forced to live on the streets with, they were brought into the ghetto with only the clothes they were wearing. And they had to beg for food. But the saddest part about it, the most sad, 
are the children on the streets of the Warsaw Ghetto, whose parents had been killed by the German army. And the children are left to fend for themselves on the streets. But Korczak, with his orphanage, he took in the children, as many as he could. He cared for them. He clothed them. And he fed them. And they lived as best they could in the Warsaw Ghetto. And he filled his orphanage to capacity so that there was not one empty bed or an empty room in his orphanage. And Korczak taught them because he was a teacher. He taught them mathematics. He taught them language. He taught them to write. He taught them skills like music. They even had their own newspaper. But on August 5th of 1942, Korczak was approached by a Nazi officer who told him that the next day his orphanage would be liquidated. That's the word the German used, liquidate. What that mean was, is that his orphanage would be emptied out. That everybody who lived there would be taken out, put on a train, and travel to the east. They would be going to Treblinka extermination death camp, where people went to go into the gas chamber and to die. That was the fate of the people, of the children, of the workers inside the orphanage. Now permit me, if you will, I'd like to read to you a, um, a couple comments by people who actually were there to eyewitness. And this is what they wrote in the newspapers and in the books that followed. Dr. Janice's children, children's home is empty now, one witness wrote. A few days ago, we all stood at the window and watched the Germans surround the orphanage. Rows of children holding each other by their little hands being to walk out the doorway. He told the orphans, said another witness, that they were going into the country. So they ought to be cheerful. At last they would be able to exchange the horrible sacrificing walls of the ghetto for meadows of flower, streams where they could bathe, woods full of berries and trees. He told them where they, to wear their best clothes upon leaving the orphanage. So they came out into the yard, two by two, dressed nicely and in a happy mood. And the leading man in front was John of Gorchak. Gorchak was marching, writes another eyewitness, his head bent forward, holding the hand of a child. A few nurses followed by 200 children, dressed in clean and meticulously cared for clothes as they were literally being led to their death. For surrounding the crowd were the Nazi soldiers. According to eyewitnesses, when a group of orphans finally reached the train station where everybody was going to be piled onto a boxcar and taken to the east, to the death camps, a Nazi German officer recognized Korczak. He recognized him because Korczak was famous for his children's books. 
And the officer recognized Korchik as the author of one of the favorite books that he used to read to his children. And he offered him to escape. Korchik was told a couple days earlier about the liquidation of the ghetto. Korchek, have you heard about what's going on? What's going to happen to the ghetto? What's going to happen to the, to the orphanage? Yes, I've heard. I've heard. Korchek, they're going to take everybody from the, from the orphanage and they're going to send them to the east on the trains to the death camps. Yes, I've heard that. But listen, Korchik, we can, we can get you out. We can save you. We can take you to a safe house. We can get you out and sneak you out, and you'll be safe. Is that true? Is that really true? Well, that's wonderful. I'll get the children ready, and... No, 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 Korchik, you don't understand. Just you. Not the children. We don't have room for the children. But the children will die. I, I can't leave the children. Korchek, this is your one chance to get away. Your one chance. I can't go. I cannot leave without the children. The trains, he boarded the trains, and he was never heard from again. Sometime after, there were rumors that the trains had been diverted and that the children were survived, but those were only rumors. This is my hero. This is my teacher, a leader, who couldn't save the children, but he was their savior in this life. As he accompanied them, to comfort them in their death. And as I leave you with a quote, Korchek said, this is my definition of a hero. Thank you. The Hero Roundtables are the global events that ask the question, what is a hero? You've just seen one hero talk, to find more and join the conversation, visit our website or social media.